All right. Well, welcome back to the second episode of the Mod Pod, where we we talk about community moderation, especially as it relates to Discord, NFT projects, gaming projects, and what are some of the best ways that you can enhance your community moderation, enhance community engagement, and then really kind of look out for yourself as well um, to, to kind of protect your community and make sure that uh, everything that you're doing uh, is, is positive for that community. So I want to talk about Section 230 today. We've heard a ton about Section 230 in the news, right? Everyone from Republicans and Democrats on both sides of the aisle think that there should be some maybe tweaking of this. Uh, I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I wanted to talk through a lot of the different ways that it affects specifically Discord communities, NFT communities. I did a, a, a TikTok today that was discussing how the the shooter about a year ago of the of that went in in Buffalo and and, and killed a bunch of people at a at a Tops supermarket went on Discord before he did this and just just said some foul things right some just awful things with hate speech and um, you, you know just talking about some of the things that he was going to do none of that was moderated none of that was really looked at so people are using that and kind of putting that under the microscope to say hey Discord should be liable or could be liable for for some of the things that that happened you know with that so there's a lot that that kind of comes into play and, and again specifically for me looking at content moderation as it relates to communities and i probably should say more community moderation than than you know looking at at a, at a TikTok where it's content but looking at community moderation looking at you know when you have a a huge you know discord community like a like a tick like a a Roblox, like a Fortnite, right? Where you could have millions of people in there, hundreds of thousands of people in there. How do you do that right, right? If somebody is saying things that are, are inappropriate, you know, who is liable for that? Is there something that maybe we need to look at um, and enforce or is thing are things fine as they are right now? Do we just kind of let things go and, and, and be part of this kind of the free speech deal? And again, I, I'm not here to, I don't think, to give my opinion on it, but I want to just kind of throw some some things at you guys, see what you think, and maybe at least get us all to think a little bit more. Oh, excuse me. So let's first talk about Section 230, right? And, and it, it came from the 1990, 1996 uh, law that was passed, um, and it was called the Communication Decency Act. And it kind of put the Internet, I guess, where it where it is today. And basically what that said was that third party, different types of, of, of platforms like Twitter, like Facebook, they are not responsible for the third party comments put onto their site, that the individual who put them on the site is responsible for them, right? So user generated content, they are not responsible for, um, and, and that this has been the debate now. Right. There's two um, Supreme Court cases that just went up last month. Um, one of them, you know, basically had a, a bunch of ISIS guys that, that came on and were using social media to kind of propagate some of the things that they were doing. You know, they ended up doing some not great things. And people are now suing, you know, the, the platforms and saying, hey, listen, you guys should have been responsible for this. You guys should have taken this down. This is an extreme situation. And, you know, there's that fight back and forth. So, you know, the the, the other piece of law to say that, you know, the, the platforms have the right to kind of moderate on their, the way that they deem to be moderated, that they're, uh, the, the rules that they have set forth you know, are, are kind of how, um, and, and they have a lot of leeway into, into say what can be on their platform and what cannot be on their platform. I'll, if you're probably listening to this, you understand what a Discord community is, but just for anybody who's new, right? So Discord communities are like giant IM texting communities. There is voice piece, you know, that, that can be involved as well. But, you know, it's kind of like giant Slack channels. Um, and for me and for our our one of our businesses, we deal with a lot of content, outsource content moderation for, for Discord especially. So some of these Discord communities are, are are massive, right? With millions or hundreds of thousands of people and, and that many people in there communicating. Within these Discord servers as well, there's different channels they're called, right? So you could have, 
you know, somewhere like a newbie channel, a general channel, a support channel, just almost like a, you know, in a call center, like an IVR, like different things that you may want to go and interact with, you know, based on, on where they are. So that's kind of what we're talking about. NFTs have kind of sprung out. Now, Discord was initially created for, for gamers, right? And it still is. It's a huge gaming platform where, where people can interact and talk. Um, but it, it, it's massive. I mean, companies are using it as Slack, right? So the, the use cases for a Discord now are, you know, really through the roof. It's any any time that you just want to really build a community based almost on anything now. But what we have found over the last two years and specifically where I'm coming from is, is the NFT community and the NFT projects and communities in, 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 in companies have moved onto Discord as the way that they are interacting with their communities, so a lot of these different discords, you you purchase the NFT and it may be, it opens up different channels within the discord too for more information um, or, you know, there, there are communities out there for, for finance, right? That gives called alpha, right? They're giving kind of insider information or um, information for, from very educated people on specific things that may be happening in the economy or happening with NFTs, right? And the only way to get this information right, is to buy the NFT. And then you, you open up those channels. But what has happened is a lot of NFT projects, the last thing that they think about is community moderation. So some of these have hundreds of thousands of people in there. There's still volunteers doing it. There's very loose, loose rules on what can be said, what can't be said. And, you know, it, it can create some real issues, not only for the, the NFT project, but then for, for the Discord as well. I, I want to talk about, a little bit on what, what what's the importance for for discord moderation when it comes to section 230 right and i just have some notes here too so it gives them legal protection for for user generated content which is which is massive um and i think it, it, that's kind of the main kind of point of, of of where this comes from right it gives them a little bit of a shield for anybody who goes on their platform and, and says some some things it allows them to moderate paul as they deem fit, you know, as long as, you know, there is something in place there. Um, I think that's, you know, the other really piece of it. And, and it provides a framework as well, especially when it comes to discord for self-regulation, especially when it comes to, again, specifically with NFT projects, right? A specific NFT project can come up with their own moderation platforms. And that's kind of what makes it a little bit unique. It's not like, you know, Facebook would just this one platform and follow the, these, this moderation deal. Where all kinds of different communities are now on Discord, right? And they can kind of self kind of regulate themselves, which I think is is a huge piece. What we're seeing now, and, and I'll be honest, selfishly for me, is we're seeing some third party moderation companies like like what I do, you know, come into the space as well. And, and not only, you know, provide that moderation piece, right, for anything that, that maybe go outside the realm of, of the policy of, of the moderation um, of the actual project, but if there's any hate speech, there's anybody talking trash on the project, right? There's there's that piece, but the cool piece is too is, you know, with with third party moderation companies, you get the added features of maybe full speech analytics or interaction analytics. So you can say, and we can track what are the trending keywords of of the the Discord, right? Is there some um, we can track actual community members. So if there's somebody in there that's always causing problems, always saying things that are inappropriate, right? Through a CRM, we can kind of track them just like a company does um, with Salesforce, right? When you call, you know, the your your cable company, all your information is there, right? And, and third parties are being, we're starting to be able to build out discords just like we're doing with, with actual customer experience as well. And, and I think there's an added security from, from somebody who is a professional like like my organization, right? So we're we're pros. We're doing it with 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 a lot of different discords to understand the deal, other than just kind of having some you know volunteer that's kind of maybe helping out. That everything is not going to be as aligned. Everything is not going to be as stringent, um, and things aren't going to be benchmarked as well. And there could be some subjectivity into who gets kicked out, maybe of your Discord, or you know who is who's allowed back in. Um, so I think, you know, that's that's the, the the one of the big things about, you know, kind of Section 230, it, it allows the freedom, right? So what are some of the consequences if, if which I think would be terrible? You know, it could be great for my business, 
But I think as as the in internet community as a whole, and first of all, I don't think this is going to happen. But if Section 230 does get repealed by the Supreme Court, um, and for my own, this is just my opinion, I believe that they're not going to repeal it. Um, I think they may add and, and ask for some added security or added moderation, um, you know, things that, that, that these platforms may need to do a little bit more. And again, selfishly, that could help my business. Um, but I think I think for the most part, things are pretty much going to stay. But let's uh, again, I have some notes here, too. So if you see me looking, but let's talk about what are the potential consequences if Section 230 was removed, you know, and, and let's try to specifically kind of say for, for Discord. So number one is obviously is, is increased legal um, risk for Discord. You know, there's going to be extremely strict moderation policy. Freedom of speech kind of would almost go out the window. I could see a lot of people leaving that platform kind of going underground, right? You're not going to want to, you know, be able to, to voice your opinion on something that is more mainstream because number one, um, they're going to go crazy with moderation. And whether you're Republican, whether you're Democrat, whether you're right, whether you're left, whether you like NFTs, hate NFTs, whether you like dog, hate dog, whatever you like, hate, right? There, There's going to be such a stringent um, amount of moderation that it's going to start to strangle um, any type of, of freedom that people have because people are going to be so scared of being sued. Platforms are going to be scared. NFT projects are going to be scared. I think you could see really NFT projects leave the Discord, um, go on to their own either their own websites or form their own communities in certain places that that aren't as public, which I think then hurts, you know, hurts that whole crypto NFT kind of space space as well. Again, so the the, the chilling effect that I think it would have on freedom of speech um, is huge. Discord could be in a huge amount of trouble with the amount of lawsuits. Everyone is so litigious, right? So anything that offends anybody in this space, they're going to end up suing. Um, and I think, you know, you're going to see Discord either really crack down, become very focused on a small segment of what type of projects they want on their platform um, that, that show the least amount of, of, of moderation needs. Um, and I think it, it really would ruin, you know, what we have built and, and what, what, what the, the Internet has built over, you know, the last you know, 30, 40, even even 50 years. Um, you, you, you're going to see a huge growth in, in companies like mine, right? Which, which you know, if, if we're focused more on the moderation, the actual content that's being put on there, right? There's a stranglehold that I think would, would, would really happen with that. And, and it becomes you know, something that's even not fun, which which I think, can, again, can hurt the, the whole deal. So there is this ongoing debate. <clears throat> again, there are two cases in front of the Supreme Court right now that are going to be ruled on could be at any moment. Most people are saying, you know, by this summer and that will have the, the biggest impact in case, unless Congress kind of comes in and, and makes their own rule, but they're the, the Supreme Court is basically based on, on, on the, the precedent that it's being set now. And again, from me following this as closely as I did and, and really reading about all of what the justices, the questions that they asked, Right. Even the most kind of right leaning uh, judges on the Supreme Court were very, very nervous to seem to, to make any huge changes to this. Because, again, outside of discord, when you're talking about Google, when you're talking about search engines, when you're talking about Reddit, anything that anyone is putting out onto the Internet, which is the whole point of the Internet, really was so that we could all communicate. We could all join together. We could we could have commerce. And now I think that. Without that, the the amount of, of legality that would come into play would, would really strangle the strangle everything. Um, and I think you'd see a really big push if it does happen again for Congress to then go pass another law um, that 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 may have you know some some effects that could that could kind of pull that away as well. So again, I think I think Section two thirty again it's something to really keep a, an eye on over the last of the next six months. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. You know, the right says that, you know, everything is shifted towards the, the the left. The left says that it's kind of shifted towards the right, right? So there is almost this bipartisan, they're going out in two different ways, but there's a bipartisan you know, way that they're both looking at this thing to say some changes may need to, to be be placed. Um, I think you'll see that through the, the congressional level more than you'll see it through the Supreme Court, who I don't think is going to have too much of an impact. But I will say in the next year to two, 
community moderation um, is, is really going to come into play a little bit more. I think people, no matter what happens, are going to tighten up a little bit of what, what happens on the platform. I think professional services for moderation that understand and, and can kind of back people down that don't have to be super stringent because they understand the law a little bit more, um, I think is, is, is really, really important in, in a way that in something that you're going to start to see here. Um, and to be honest, selfishly, um, I hope that we have a, a little piece to play in that as well. So again, that's kind of what I just wanted to kind of talk that through kind of on our second, I think, you know, section 230 is such a huge piece um, of, of what we're doing um, as, as community moderators and, and it's, it's in the news all the time. So Again, just just thinking that through from the Discord and the NFT standpoint, I think uh, is something that is really important to me and, and is kind of fascinating to me as well. So we'll see how this all plays out. Um, but I think right now we're okay. Uh, but there's a lot to, to be said, and, and this game's not over with with the moderation of, of Discord and, 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 and NFT communities as a as a whole.